guys, welcome back to my channel. I am excited to cook with you today. I have been waiting for a while to do a reverse sear tutorial and today is the day. Reverse sear method of cooking steaks or meat in general is probably one of the most versatile things that you can do. And once you uh, master these concepts, you'll be able to take this and transition it to a lot of different types of meats and roasts. You could do it with a tri-tip, any type of really thick steak, one of those big giant tomahawk steaks. Those are all gonna work with this method. Today I have a prime strip, a rib cap wrapped up and tied, and then I also have this beautiful, almost two inch thick ribeye that we are gonna do. So this is probably the one we're gonna follow this video through the entire process and show you how it's done. The concept of reverse sear is to start it in the oven. We're gonna put on a low temperature, on a cooling rack, on a baking sheet, and bring it up to temperature that we almost wanna eat it at. Um, this will allow it to slowly rise, and it's gonna cook the steak really evenly all the way through. And then at the last minute, when it's almost the perfect temperature, we're gonna take it out of the oven, and you can finish it and give it a nice sear. Your options for that are gonna to be to do it on a cast iron skillet, on the actual grill, or today we're gonna to use uh, my fun new tool, which is an auto wild grill, to give it a nice crust at the end. So we're gonna do the oven at 250 degrees. And while that's preheating, I'll let you know what else I'm working with. One of the key tools for doing a reverse sear is you really need a meat thermometer. It's kind of, in my opinion, non-negotiable. We are gonna use a meat thermometer called the meter. It is a Bluetooth, wireless, very fancy meat thermometer that comes with an app. You don't have to be this fancy. You can simply use a corded meat thermometer that you can get from Amazon that has like a digital display. And more than anything, you still could just use your instant read thermometer. You just would have to check it a little more often manually in the oven. One of my most commonly given tips is to let your steaks sit out for about an hour before you cook them. This just really takes the chill of the fridge off. It takes the inside temperature and raises it a little bit. So you're starting with a, a slightly less chilled steak and it's gonna cook more evenly. When you're doing a reverse sear, it is nice to do, but it's not as required because we're gonna slowly bring up that temperature from the oven itself. No matter what meat thermometer you're using, one of the most important things is just to make sure that it is centered in the meat so that you're getting that middle temperature from its readings. Looks like we're ready to go. I'm gonna put some coarse salt on here before I put it in the oven. I use a cookie sheet with a cooling rack on top of it just to allow it to sit off the pan and get some air circulation underneath of it. Most of that salt's gonna fall off, but that's okay. Now we are gonna put this in the oven. It will likely take between 30 minutes to an hour. How long your piece of meat takes will totally determine on what your temperature of the meat is starting with, how thick it is, and what the final temperature that you want is gonna be. So a meat thermometer is key for this. According to my meat thermometer, my internal temperature is at 115 degrees. I want this steak to be completely done at 130, so when it rests, it will come up to about 135, and that's where I like to eat my steaks. So right about 120, we're gonna take it out. When it's a few minutes from being out of the oven, you wanna go ahead and preheat whatever it is you're gonna be finishing it on. So if I'm gonna use the cast iron skillet, I wanna get my cast iron nice and hot, and then I'll finish it for maybe a minute on each side until that internal temperature is 130. I can preheat my grill. The grill might take two minutes on each side depending on the, the heat of your grill, but you're gonna want whatever you're using nice and hot before you take the meat out of the oven and put it on to finish it. Internal temperature is 120 degrees. We're gonna take it out of the oven. And take your meat thermometer out before you finish it. Don't use your hands. And all we're trying to do now is create this nice crust at the end.
Whatever method you're using, you want to get a crust on both sides, so we are going to flip it halfway through. I checked and we're right about that 128, 127, so it's right exactly where I want it. We're going to give it about 20 more seconds and then we'll bring it out. Once I'm at temperature, I'm going to pull it out and we're going to let it rest. To maintain the integrity of this crust, I want to let it sit away from its own juices. If I had it on a flat surface, it was just going to sit there and get soggy. Depending on how thick your meat is will determine how long you need to let it rest. This steak has been resting about five minutes and so we are good to slice into it. Reverse sear is really good at giving you an even cut, even The evenness that we see cooked all the way through is that's the reverse sear. If you try to do this the entire time on a grill or a cast iron, as thick as this steak is, you would see like a thick layer of well done meat at the top and it would be much more rare in the middle. Perfection. I like to finish it with some of that same coarse salt. Perfectly juicy, tender all the way through, wonderful crust on top. That's the beauty of a reverse sear. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below on any other cooking methods or techniques that you'd like to see me do.